today, um, one of the things is, is that you're, uh, we always have a reason, especially in my body, if I have a, a pain, I have a, usually generally have a reason that way it makes my brain satiate. So a lot of the reasons are, let's say it's a nerve, but let's, let's not assume it is. Let's just, let's just say I have a pain here, or I have this or a dysfunction here. And um, because that way it gives us open to whatever else it could be, okay? okay? What I want to do is get simple things that you can do with each other that help drastically, radically sh shift the body. What we're going to do uh, to start off with is uh, we're going to watch your gait um, and then we're going to record your gait back and forth and we're just going to see your observations of what happens when we do the work uh, and then we're going to watch your gait again. So we're going to be able to look at things changing and you can't, I mean you can feel the change but we're going to actually watch it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do a couple, couple gates here first. What we'll do is uh, just get you to go straight back and forth. And what I want you to just pay attention to is just, just generalize what's happening, what's going on for you. <clears throat> um, you know, are things working? Is there stiff spots? These are super, super simple. You can do this with any partner. Okay. So let's do the first one, it's called pullover. What it's gonna look like is you're gonna reach over like this. I'm gonna match your weight. Um, the difference is if I'm pulling on your fascia, your, your muscles are going to fight back. Okay. If, I match, if we match our weight balance point, then both of us release and the, and the fascia starts to let go and the muscles aren't trying to protect you. Okay, okay so let's see what this looks like. So what I'm going to do here is on the very first one, I'm going to take and I'm going to torque your hand. So I got, I got your wrist, I'm going to torque it both days. I'm going to find out which way is best for me, but I just want to counter rotate either way. This one feels best for me. I have more grip like this, okay? Yeah. So let's uh, sit back, yeah, and there. Okay, uh, sit back further, drop your, there you go. Yeah, use me to hold you up. Back a bit further. There you go. Okay, now as soon as you feel there, you feel it start transferring. Mm -hmm. And where do you feel it? Elbow, inside elbow. Inside elbow, okay, so. So what we're gonna do is breathe deep. You can use your other hand for stability on the floor. So you have three points of contact on the floor and just try to relax and open up your shoulder. Let it go. There it goes. Now this, I wanna, you, this one you start feeling all the way into the back. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it down in your sacrum yet? Yeah. Okay, see we're stretching the fascial meridians all the way to the sacrum here. And what I'm doing is I'm constantly creating slow, articulated turns. And I can actually provide a little extra leverage in here. And I can actually move the joint like this. So this is an advanced version of the one that we have on the web. Deep breathe, yeah, there you go, deep breathe. I'm gonna put, so as a practitioner, I can move my hands, I get a different stretch. There we go. Awesome, okay, come on up. Whew. A lot of, quite a bit of cardiovascular, actually, yeah. on my part. Okay, so let's go for a walk and see how it goes. And as you feel stuff, or as you notice stuff, feel free to share it. I feel like seems a little more vibrant, which is uh, interesting, everything seems a little lighter. So that visually, ocularly? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, it's interesting, because I think as we do this, it feels like my head starts to, like, I feel my body start to take over, and I don't have to think as much. My body starts to move, and my eyes, I just become more perceptively aware of like, the stuff around me. Okay, the reason why that is, is that inside stress in your body, as your stress goes up, 
your perception goes down. As your stress goes down, your perception goes up. So basically, you see, smell, taste everything differently when your fascia is loose. So this is a dislocated shoulder, so be uh, gentle with my spirit and soul here. Okay. Or the, I've dislocated this one 11 times. So. Well, so that's a, that, okay, that's a really good thing to know. The dislocation, there, there's, there's a lot to do actually with the tattoo. Well, and the we're, tattoo did, it started after all the dislocations, but... No, for, for, yeah. fair enough. But, there's, but the thing is, is that if you look at the tone of your skin here and the texture of it, it's very different here. And it's because there's ink in there. It just has to be worked through. It's not a big deal. You make my tattoo fade away? Not fade away. But I'm going to make it, I'm going to give it some, I'm just going to move the skin, like stretching it. Okay. So. This would be a good push for you to do. Yeah. What do you do if you have tattoos? <laughs> okay, yeah, it we actually, actually, we have one like that. It doesn't, oh, okay, okay, so what I want to do is I want you now to, to pull your shoulder up. Okay, a little higher. Turn your head away. Okay, and breathe deep. So since you told me it's your dislocated shoulder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little extra time doing this first before we do the other movement. There it goes. Okay, now move that shoulder around. And let's go for another walk. Again, just kind of uh, get a feel for what you feel is different, what's changing. Does it feel like that shoulder's lower or higher? It feels like your arms are longer. Yeah, but, no, you pulled your arm and drums so longer. But it's, in some ways, it's, um, I think about this because it's like, I get to, if I get stressed, like, you know, get up here, but it's like, okay, if I let them hang more, it's... Right, so there's another thing, too, if, if we think of this in circular, if it's tight, the femur can't move through it as far. So that, or sorry, the, humerus. the humerus, yeah. So, so that there's more fascial constriction, um, then it tightens up, like tightens up. So it feels longer because there's more space because mm -hmm. objectively your arm isn't longer. Yeah. Okay. This feels that way. So let's do this one now. Okay. There's a little bit of hesitation there. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Hesitation's natural. Lean all the way back. There we go. This is connected directly to that, we said that right, uh, sort of left upper back, upper hip, uh, legs, I mean, sorry, lower back. Mm -hmm. This is the same meridian, this is large intestine, right here. Mm -hmm. So it goes all the way down to lower back. Okay. Now you can kind of get a feel, you know your body really good. You start moving to what you think is right. Get that stretch out there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, I got you there. I heard that crack. And that's just below the scapula. Yeah. The Turn your head around. Move your head in circles. I'm just doing is turning on here. You feel that change? So. Whoa. He felt that one, huh? He started sweating. Yeah, you started sweating on that one. Okay, that was the big release. So what it was, it was right here, where this tattoo was done here. There's a layer of fascia called the large intestine that comes right from here. It goes mm -hmm. all the way through here. It was stuck right here, so guess where you're gonna feel it? Yeah. Right there.
I like I just like entire entire side of this which is broke down like the mild perspiration that lasts the like It's crazy, isn't it? I got hot too. <laughs> yeah, he got hot too. The whole room got hot. Actually we'll turn off the fireplace. Let's go for a walk again. So we're doing fascial work. It doesn't take much movement to create uh, a metabolic effect. So this is where we said it's not work equals force times distance. Like the normal formula for burning calories in the body is how much load I pick up, how much work, how much distance do I carry it. That's a measurement, but really it's how much blood is flowing through the, the lungs and how much fluid's moving through the fascial layers. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like to you right now? It feels like my scapula moved for the first time in a long time. Right. I mean, there's still like that, you can fit you Feel yeah, yeah, because this is a, we'll get to that, but see, this is, these are the layers right up in here. These are the layers that were stuck. So it doesn't matter that the tattoo came after, the tattoo now is having an impact on these, these primary layers here. So what I want you to do is turn your head right to left. And I'm just peeling the skin apart, Larry. Right? Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, because those are contuted, uh, contusions in the fascial layers. I feel that in the neck. Okay, now right and left with your head slowly. So this is like the vagus nerve release that we do. Now I want you to squat. And I'll do the same thing. So by squatting now, it puts more pressure because you'll feel that come down into this area. Yeah. You feel that? Mm -hmm. So that's the reciprocal areas that we're working on here. There's this area right here, just stretching the skin there. And this was probably your back pain the other day. It probably wasn't a nerve. Don't know that for sure. Yeah. But come on, let's get up and walk. But based on my experience and, and looking at your body right now. It's amazing how much that even sipping that up. So SI starts to open up. Yeah. We haven't touched the SI joint yet. So the idea is the layer of fascia that goes over the SI, the large intestine, also goes over your shoulder, goes up the back, over the scapula, over the shoulder, and to the, down the front and the forearm, to the middle fingers. Yeah, feeling that, like, it's starting to have a growing sense of, it's like a, a sense of, pressure there, but like, uh, I don't want to call it trigger point, but just in that, like now it's starting to, a little yeah. sensation there, but it's starting to, like, it's almost like sensations coming back to this area. Yeah, so we're going back to what was covered up. So at some point you felt this sensation, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you didn't have the right solution or the right answer at that time. So your body just did what it does best. Okay, now it's opening it up to the head. Okay. Yeah, so there's all kinds of, uh, I would get neck uh, stingers up that left side, like you reach too far, or like, and then jujitsu has been an interesting experience, some of those you, you had worked on, but it's actually felt kind of healing in some sense. So jujitsu, if you, um, what I was showing you earlier about pressing against me when we were turning, mm -hmm. if jujitsu holds are meant to de uh, destabilize a joint to break it, mm -hmm. but if you're not in fear and you actively move against me, it actually will hurt, it'll help your joint. Mm. So basically, I, I, we turned jujitsu into a healing art. Mm. Actually, I think it was originally. I think we just put war on it. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do this time is going to go down on all fours, okay, like this. So you're going to use your knee on this one. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, now uh, on all fours, though. Okay, so give me this leg. So what I'm doing is I'm going to lock the leg in between my thighs. I'd like to get skin contact if I can. I don't have to. And I'm going to torque my hand. I'm going to torque against your, your uh, calf at the top or at the knee. And then you can feel that strain and that push and that torque there, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so what I want you to do is then move around. You're the therapist now. I'm the control group. So these are modifications of our pra practitioner torque, or sorry, our practitioner torque, and then they're 
we have a completely partnered one on, on our YouTube channel. But what I'm doing is I'm just modifying it for your needs right now. So right here, so that right there. Mm -hmm. That's your spleen uh, on the, right on the inside. So let's come around a little bit more. And it's the torque that's providing the body the benefit to change. Because it doesn't understand this movement now based on what you're used to doing. Okay. Okay, we have a good, good amount of torque in there. Okay. Let's get up and take a look. So what I liked about doing this work, it was a workout for me, not a strain on my body. Yeah. So it's like me exercising where a practitioner work is usually. Oh, look at that. Yeah, the whole thing shows like it's, it's just now freely. Freely moving, freely rotating. The knee feels just unbound, which is interesting. Yeah, well, because it, it was, it built a relationship with balance under constriction. So now you take away the constriction, it has to learn a new relationship. In three minutes, I'll do that, but we'll, we'll, we'll integrate that later. Let's go to the other leg. So again, I'm gonna go skin and skin if I can. I wanna get as much torque as I can here. And you got big legs, damn it. So. Skip leg day. What? I'll skip leg day. <laughs> So move around a little bit. It's the angles and the vectors that make everything happen here. Now we had this tight spot in your hip before. Right there, right in the choke counter, you feel that, that up there, right? So I'm just pushing into it and then allowing your body to move around it. There it goes. What you just felt there, that was a big, big layer releasing a fascia going right from the foot into the hip. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher because you got such damn big legs. Okay, now move around. Oh, holy shit. Now I'm sweating bullets. Yeah, it's interesting the perspiration. Like, it's fairly cold out here. Not cold, but it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's like, if it's not a sweat perspiration, it's like just that. Toxin release. Yeah. Open up layers of fascia. The body, the, the layers start to populate, it pushes all the toxins out. Yeah, it's gonna go run. Like, it's still lighter. It's like you're feeling less bound, less bound. Okay, so let's do a couple more laps this time. What I want you to do is, uh, <clears throat> is do a couple more laps. We'll let this integrate a bit deeper because we've done all, both arms and both shoulders. So let's give it a full three minutes of walking to let your body understand this before we move to what's next. It's interesting now, starting to feel uh, sensation and motion here. It's like, what's strange is that like, there's a piece of it that's the body started to reintegrate this stuff in a sense. And in the absence of sensation, it feels like I don't know what to do with it. Right. So it's kind of like this, it's, it's, uh, it's reintegrating the stuff. It's like, okay, well, I know what stiffness feels like. I know what my typical gait pattern feels like. And I know what these thing, these, these components feel like. But then with the absence of that, like, okay, you take this and it's like, it kind of fills in this, like you open up space. So what I think the body's first instant, like first <clears throat> instance is you go, oh, well, it hurts. It's like, well, no, it's just, it's just, it's just space. It's change. It's so change. your body says change hurts unless I have, unless I know what it is. Even the first time I do something that, that, that's painful, but it's good for me. It's like, oh, but then after a couple of times, I start to like it. I start to feel better because your body just doesn't like to surprise a new behavior. Mm. And it's taken, and your body is used to adapting, but since we have forced this muscle, skeletal, mechanical way of moving, our body has been taught not to adapt over time. Mm. 
So we're just getting the body to adapt again. Yeah. And we're just making it okay. Now, super powerful. Let's do the hip release. The hip release is <clears throat> super powerful in my mind. Lay on your back. It's the strongest, fastest way to release the hips. Now, the self version of this, okay? Let's do the self version first, okay? <laughs> if it does the part noise, it's, uh... <laughs> I don't know, man, what that looks like, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got your back to fart. This will be, there will be a moment. You got a back fart. I'm like, did he really fart? Okay, let's, so I'll, let me show you the self care version. Take your right foot, put it over top, um, all the way over, like leg over, like this. Bring your knees to your chest. Grab, grab, <laughs> grab the shins, grab the shins, split them apart. See, that's different, right? Yeah. That's creating torsion. Okay, that's the self-care version. Pull your head up, tighten your core, and then six breaths. Okay, good. Now let's go to the other side, switch it. <clears throat> let's see, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it with assisted. This is where the issues is. You can feel the hips twisting up there. Yeah. So bring it up. And by putting my hand in three different parts of the body, it just makes the fascia lighten up a little bit. Okay, good. Now let's see what that does all by yourself. That's you doing that simple little 12 breaths. I think I'm getting taller every time. <laughs> you are getting taller. My gosh, I always feel like a midget when I'm around you. <laughs> so what do you notice now? Here, it's uh, less balanced. It feels like, it feels as though you just took <clears throat> my spine and just lengthened. So the question was, was it your hips? that was binding, or was it this area that was binding your hips? I think the more I'm working on this stuff, I'm realizing that like a lot of this, so it depends on the pattern you've done with the rotation going up and like the anti-gravity, um, or just things that we're thinking about, it's just like there's a lot of space in there that's, it's held. That's fascinating. 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 Yes. <clears throat> Not allowed to use the word fascinating anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you got a sense of what that felt by yourself. Now let me do it with you. There's a couple ways to approach this. Uh, okay, let's go right, right over first. Okay, a couple ways to approach this. If I, I can just push down like this and you, and you uh, cross your arms, go ahead. That's one way, it works. Okay, but the more powerful way is I'm actually gonna force the load on here. So I'm actually gonna grab your head, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull you into a ball and I'll breathe. <laughs> So I gotta stabilize myself. So my weight is working on your hips. Okay, so your body fights to adapt. See, there it goes, it lets go. Now it's starting to relax into it. There it goes. And then the hip naturally drops. So we all have a hip placement like this, somehow. Mm -hmm. This, this, this. When I put you in that position, the hips have to go down equally, but they're not equal. Mm -hmm. So my weight's pushing one of the hips through the fascia. So it's pushing the bone and the muscle through the fascia. Okay. Let's go this one over. There it is. Yeah, there it is. And the other thing too, I can apply torque on the knee here yeah. to start. So start with that. So I'm just twisting the knees and breathe. There it is. So there's already a calming sensation there, right? Mm -hmm. So I can apply torque by just twisting the knees either way, counter-rotating. Now I'm gonna come down, same thing as before.
I'm using my weight, which is way more effective because my weight, your body won't fight weight, it'll fight me pushing. Out of context, this may look funny. There you go. See when I get you on your back, it starts on your shoulder blades, mm -hmm. it starts opening it up. Okay. Now again, this requires no special skill. Anybody can. Yeah. Okay. This is gonna be a radical shift for your hips. So. Oh my gosh. It's like that. It's just a, it's like an intense release to the skin. Yeah. So the the like a burning sensation, right? Okay, that burning sensation, those are the layers of fascia that are stuck. The way we believe it is each layer is associated with an organ. And, and there's, there's 10 layers that ring around the bone. It's not how you see it when you cut it open, mm -hmm. but what it is, it's, it's how it looks or how it operates. So we deal with how fascia operates, not how it looks. Okay. Because looking at it is disingenuous anyways. Because as soon as I put a scope up to your body, your body knows and it starts acting differently. And if I cut your body open, your entire body knows, it's, knows it has to defend itself. So it changes stuff inside. So even scoping and all these tests that we're doing, they show us pictures, but they're not showing us the true operation. They're showing us the visual of it, mm -hmm. but they're not showing us how it works when we're not there poking around. Mm -hmm. You know, if a bear shits in the forest, doesn't make a sound. Only if you're there to see it. <laughs> I mixed those two up on purpose. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how does right, it so right through here it just feels unencumbered. It's this mid back. Right. So so the so the problem that you had predominantly wasn't your hips. Mm -hmm. Your hips were absorbing the problem from the back, and then they were absorbing it unequally. Mm -hmm. And what that meant, if they're absorbing it unequally, is it started to lock on the hips unequally. This one forward, this one back. Mm -hmm. See how that's normally like that? So they basically if I go like this, mm -hmm. soft. Hard, mm. soft, hard, because the body crisscrosses. One of the ways that we deal with that is I'm gonna take your hips here, like this, just give you a hip thing. You stand, keep your feet locked. I'm gonna rotate my body, turn your, turn your body away. Yeah, right there, right there. All I'm doing is forcing your hips to rotate in, a, like the fascia to rotate in a new direction. Breathe. Oh, turn your head. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, as soon as you turn your head, you'll feel it kick in. So just so you have the difference. Turn your head back. Yeah. Okay, now, yeah, see, so you see the difference? Mm -hmm. That opens up the hips. That's why the head is the most important part. Remember you said 200, 640 muscles. Well, depends on who you talk to. 640 muscles, and over half of them are the neck and head. Mm -hmm. Breathe deep. So breathing is the therapist here. Without breathing, nothing else is gonna work. Now, for those of you guys who know, now I want you to do is cross your foot, your right foot over top. Can you do that? Okay, good. Now this is totally twisted. Breathe. Okay, let's, now we're gonna twist the other way here. Cross your other foot over. And. See that torque is inside your body now. Yeah. Breathe. I'm just providing a little extra stretch in here. There it goes. Okay. A little extra. A little extra. Well, I'm just grabbing, I'm just twisting your, basically we're twisting all the fascia around your spine and around the bone. That's the move, it moves in, in rotation and torquing. So we, 
release it in rotation torque. You're moving your rib cage now. Yeah. So what's happening is you're over moving your shoulders mm -hmm. yesterday, which was better than using your hands mm -hmm. because your rib cage was a little bit stuck. Okay. Now one thing is we didn't do the upper shoulder on the right side. So this shoulder, as you're walking, this shoulder is coming up like this yeah. because what we didn't do last time is we only did the one side. So I'm gonna take and I rotate the skin. So like this, rotate. Mm -hmm. Now if I pull, watch. Okay, pull, pull away from me, lift your shoulder up. It's a fight, but if I sit, use my body weight, mm -hmm. see the change? Mm -hmm. So there's no threat, so breathe. I'm gonna have you know, every athlete I've ever worked on, every athlete in the world, calling and asking for sessions after we do this, you know? Oh, sure. But the whole point is, is that nothing I'm doing here, you're gonna learn, you're gonna do all this. Yeah. So this is not me, this is just something, mm -hmm. anybody can do it. If I do it 10 times, I'm gonna be better than if mm -hmm. I did it once. Absolutely. Let's go for a walk now and see how that feels. Yeah. What do you notice? Keep walking to do a couple more laps. It's a big change, so your body takes a minute. So it goes, when you do a fascial work at this level, there's three minutes, there's four blocks of 45 seconds. The first 45 seconds, your body's going, what? What happened? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Second one goes, oh, I need to do something. Third one's, okay, I need to do something in this area, I'm getting an idea what to do. And then the fourth 15 second block, it goes, Oh, I've integrated. So the body always works in these three minute increments of understanding the world. And every time you walk, every three minutes in motion, your body balances all 640 muscles, all 226 bones, and all the fascia, organs, nerves, perception balance every three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's why that if you go for a walk, or uh, as example, if you go for a walk that's 10 minutes, it feels good, 20 minutes it feels good, but by 30 minutes, almost all that little aches and pains go on the, right at the 30 minute mark. And that's because it's 10 cycles of three. And there's 10 organs in your body. So each organ gets three minutes to figure itself out. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. That's what we're doing here. One more lap. So tell me what you're noticing. It's just that uh, space is unencumbered <clears throat> through here. A lot of space on movement. Shoulders start to feel like they're dissociated from the <clears throat> neck. The head start to move, the hands start to move. Everything is like, and flow and flux here. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's go do, um, now I'm gonna take some, some basic moves, show you how to do it yourself, and then I'm gonna do it with you, okay? You're gonna take your hands like this, put your thumbs downwards on your kneecaps. Okay, you're gonna rotate the skin inwards, so, yep, yeah, and squat, and hold it and then breathe. Feel that, squeeze your sacrum, squeeze your sex organs, pull on your, your spine, turn your head right and left, slowly. See that changes it? Mm -hmm. So we have to move everything. Awesome. Okay, so basically we're a bag. Mm -hmm. And that bag wraps, if I, if I do something here, it has to resolve somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So think of the human body like this. This and this match. This and this match. This and this match. This and this match. Mm -hmm. And they're, they not only match in function and in form and kind of look alike, they also match in pressure. So when I'm moving though, this is very relative. These pressure centers are relative. So if I have a hip issue here, shoulder issue here, knee, elbow, ankle, wrist. Mm -hmm. So with, with like Olympic runners, if they have a, a, an ankle problem, we fix this wrist. Okay. So, and so there's nothing in biomechanics that explains that. So we use the, we can go to functional neurology, 
But functional neurology, the brain is just coordinating the action of the fascia. So it makes sense that the brain would know about it and you could see it in the brain, but really it's pressure. Mm -hmm. So we move like what you were experiencing earlier, I move something in here and the pressure changes. Mm -hmm. Things move through the body. Okay, so let's show you how that feels like when I do it. So lay on your back. So this is again how you can take that, you do it yourself, just put your knees up um, like this. So when I do it, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll just give it a good crank. And yeah, you're, you're, you're the exact opposite of me. So my left leg and right leg scenario is the same distance, like my right leg, my left leg's bigger than my right, mm -hmm. your right's bigger than your left. So I want you to feel where you feel the uh, warmth and sensation traveling to. Okay. And, um, through the hip. Right, through the hip, yeah. Okay, now it's gonna change in a minute. You get warm. Back. Yeah, sacrum. Yeah. Okay, now it's gonna start crawling all the way up the spine. Okay. Feel more like the yeah, center of that. And I could, I could stimulate it by just moving it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That gets it past the block point. Not fast. If I go fast, if I go like this, watch this. Yeah, the, the muscles kick in, and then the fascia work is done. So you have to, with fascia work, you have to move slowly, four centimeters per second. Tell me where you feel it, Bill. You're strong on the uh, right side of that sacrum. Ooh, something just changed there. What I'm doing is I'm play, applying that fascial torque again. Okay, now it's getting, you get ready up to your lungs, you feel that? Because now you want to breathe more. So it's restri unrestricting fashion your lungs by tor torquing your knees. Cool concept. Okay, now it's going to go up, okay, it's getting into your neck and head. That's, uh, it's, yeah, feeling through that with Ray, there's a lot of, lot of action that can be happening around here too. Yeah. Fascinating. Fashion. I know a lot of uh, fascinating. I'm doing a lot of attention there. Okay, so let's go for a quick walk. Okay, now you're going to have a new sensation with your, with your knees and your feet. Now I can hear your feet. You hear them? They're clipping. Clip, clip. Clip, clip. <laughs> You're walking completely different. <laughs> it feels just, it's, but it's, it's less thinking. So it's, well, I'm noticing less. I'm just... Yeah, but you weren't consciously thinking about it, but what it was doing, it's, you made a very good point. It's your, body's, your body and your brain are doing the thinking below your awareness to, to overcompensate for any issues that are there, it's designed to do that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, is less thinking, but technically you weren't thinking about it before. Mm -hmm. You see how that, that place? Now let, let's change something in your head on one side and see how it affects your body now, okay? Because we did all this work, but we see the body in three pressure zones. Pressure zone one, from here to here. Pressure zones two, from here to here. Okay. Pelvic floor, bladder, down is pressure zone number three. So if I change pressure here, it has to change here and has to change here somewhere. Mm -hmm. So let's try that out. Let's go take your, take your left hand over, grab your top of your right here, and grab the bottom with here, and I'll pull it apart really hard, like, like so it's burning and hurting. It's only pain, it's only relative. So breathe. Okay. And then move a little bit. So just slow movement. The movement you'll feel, okay, you'll start to see as you move and twist that the ear and the back of the neck and the fascia starts to open up. You feel that? Yeah. Okay, good. So we only did one side on purpose because let's see what the contrast is. 
Let's go for a walk. Can you hear everything on his right side? The whole world is here. <laughs> Your body wants to pull at one side, right? Yeah, it's just bizarre. Like if, I, if I'm not consciously adjusting it, but it says I'm like push this way. Yes, because what's happened is you've, you've changed the pressure in one area of the body, it has to accommodate for the other. There's nothing in mechanics or biomechanics that explains what just happened to you. Okay. So this is where we said we have an observation about the body, but, but there's nothing in science that says, there's no science behind what we do. Mm. I mean, we're making science from what we do, mm. but there's no science that explains it. That's why we had to do it. So let's try the other ear. By the way, your whole face went unbalanced. Yeah, <laughs> so I, do the I'm other sure side. Now, it, these are, now, you notice when you do this, okay, a good, good pull, <clears throat> squat. You'll notice that when you do this, yeah, that it, it, it relieves all the tension in the, uh, through the neck, down through here, into the shoulders, and into the jaw, and into the chin, and also up into the head, up into the crown. <clears throat> now, if, I was, if I'm working with you, I can go like this as a practitioner or a coach, and I can just give it a little bit more stretch in that area. Like that. Okay, good. <clears throat> You're gonna be a little high there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the, that, that balance or that pull to one side. So can you imagine, you're a fighter, you're a boxer, you have an injury on this side of the head, it's in that ear. So that's always pulling you that way. Mm -hmm. So you learn to start walking the other way. Well, what, how many systems in your body have to be affected? One of them is your vestibular. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to reprogram your vestibular right now. Okay, <clears throat> super, super powerful. Okay, so um, uh, face me. One of the tests to see... Vestibular, and there's a lot of question of inner ear, outer ear, and all that. I don't even want to have the argument. Let's, I want you to move better. I don't want to care about the science of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take your right foot and put it in front of your left foot. Okay, and then close your eyes. You have a really good balance, but you feel yourself pulling to one side, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it the other way. So even though you have a fantastic balance and you can do it, okay, no, you can open your eyes to set, sorry. Open your eyes, get it set up. Then close. <clears throat> okay, it's mostly on that one side. So <clears throat> on your left side, we have a vestibular issue. There's three generalized areas of the vestibular, or three points of, Planes of motion, <clears throat> and um, I'm gonna like I'm gonna call it vestibular for this count today, but I don't even think it's vestibular anymore. I have a different view of it um, through another day. Okay, you're pretty balanced. Okay, let's take that off. Okay, let's do one one movement, and this is gonna make a big difference because your body was pulling to one side for a long time, and you you run and you walk for your whole for many years. Your body's been pulling one way, you've been pulling the other way. So what that does is it causes a rotation. So the vestibular programming, we're going to use your eyes to do it. You're going to put your right, uh, right thumb in front, you're going to go to your left. So right thumb in front of your eye. Okay, it's six inches. Okay, I'm going to move your eye, I'm going to move it for you here. So basically, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Close. Come back to center, keep it closed. Open. Do it again. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Close. Okay, I want you to focus on what your glutes are doing this time, okay? Open. Okay, feel your glutes as you do it. Feel that tighten up in your glute? Mm -hmm. I can feel it tighten up in your glute, close. I can watch your eyes and tell you when you tighten your glutes. Okay, now I want you to do that action six more times by yourself. Close, come back to center. Raise this a little bit. Again. Two. Close. Okay. Now from this one, pay attention to your glutes again. Keep them neutral. Try to, yeah, let them relax, let them relax. 
Uh, harder. Okay, close. So it's harder when you focus because there's tension happening there to balance. Again, three more times. Close. And close. There's companies that just do functional neurology. One more time. And they do this, they do like hundreds of these, but these are to get around fascial restrictions. Close. So the only ones I really use right now at all of these, of all the functional neurology, is just a vestibular. That's it. All the rest of it, because I'm, instead of working my wrist circles and, and doing stuff for my wrist, I'm just going to rem remove the reason why there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So that changed something, right? Mm -hmm. What do you feel? It just feels like a, I, it's hard to say it changed something, but it, it still, I let go of this and I just stood up. It was like a correction. Yeah, correction. A, a vertical <clears throat> correction, I guess the best way to say it. Yeah, because what was happening is your brain perceived you falling to one side. So let's test that foot in front of the other again. Way better. Last time you were falling down. Okay, it's still not there. Still a little quiver right here. Okay, so let's do one more. Because there's, there's three, pro there's this plane, this plane, and this plane. Mm -hmm. So th when I noticed you did yours, you were going this way, but then your head wanted to go up a little bit, which means it's not a primary, it's just a little bit. So put that right hand up. Okay. So then we'll go like this. Okay, hold on, a little bit closer. Six inches, turn, 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 turn. Close, uh, that was the action. Okay, open, okay. Close, good, one more time. Close, okay, now do that yourself. Good, close. There you go. A couple more times. Close. Again. Close. Okay, now watch the glutes this time. That left glute. Relax, relax. Relax the glute. There you go. Close. Close, and then back. One more time. Smooth this time. There you go, close and come back. Okay, <clears throat> now relax. That did something to your nervous system. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? It's just very centered around here. I think it's just calmer and more. Calmer. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not, because you're, if you're in fright, you're like, your, your eyes, your ocular nerve, is everything is sending some, oh, there's a, there might be a problem, there might be a problem information back. So let's do the test again. Way better. Okay, good. And then let's, let's walk up. Uh, let's just do a walk up. Yeah, everything seems quieter. Yeah, your brain's quieter right now. So before, one of the things that you told me is, I gotta go move, I gotta go move, I gotta go move. But do you feel that same sensation, or is it changed? And it could be. Uh, there's an emotional, like, it's less of an anxious, like... The anxiousness of the desire to do something in your body change, now it's a, now it's a want, not a need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, I would enjoy doing some type of training, but it's, I'm on, like, I'm getting some movement in, and I'm feeling the body engage, and it would be, I would like to do some training, but it's not that same kind of, like, I need yeah. to, like, get out there and do something. Yeah, because when you were talking to Cynthia earlier, it was almost like, it's almost like, oh, I, ha like, I gotta do this. Okay, it's, and then it goes more from I gotta do it to. Yeah, I like that. I want to get out of the house and move and do stuff. It just makes me happy. Okay, so look, come on, let's go over here now. Feels pretty good, right? Yeah. I feel more balanced, more centered. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to the knee thing because you have a, there's a lot of hip imbalance. Um, and it's not a lot of imbalance, a lot of, a lot of function built around a small imbalance is a better way to say it. Let's go on your back. So one of the ways is if I'm helping you and I'm your partner, most people aren't going to have the hand strength to really do what I do. So, 
So one of the ways I can do it is I can take both hands, put it on the knee, and go like this, and then I can just bend the knee inwards. And you feel that stretching your IT, what you know is your IT band. Mm -hmm. I feel it stretches the top of the foot, really. Yeah, oh, okay, and stop the foot, yeah, that's good. So I'm torquing it the same way, okay, good. Now this one's really good because what I did is I anchored with your foot and then I pushed against it. So I'm getting resist, fascial resistance here, fascial resistance here, torque here, torque into there. So I'm getting multiple planes of, of work. Let's do the other one. So I'm getting multiple planes of work on the, same, on the same action. So grab the knee, twist, inward. You can rotate the knee both ways, but you'll find pretty quickly that most people are gonna like it rotated inward. It's not going to hurt it if you do it the wrong way. Just there's one way is better. Okay, now that pressure feels a little bit different than the other side, right? What do you know is different? Well, there's a, a, a spot point is the inside of that metatarsal flange joint on my right big toe presses in the ground. So yeah. Yeah. yeah that, there we go. That's that, uh, that's a much deeper through here. Yeah, because what it was was there's there's too much sensory processing down there for your body. To, so it drew all your attention up over there. The second, uh, the second I readjusted the foot. Everything started to drop. So, so this, is, this looks like, okay, put your legs together. Okay, this looks like a, and, and give your arms a hug. So this, <clears throat> this kind of looks like a, uh, a stretch that a, a trainer might do, or a chiropractor. So bring you here and bring you here, right? Mm -hmm. Turn your head back the other way. It's totally twisted. Yeah, so it's basically, it's totally twisted on the ground. Super powerful. Yeah, this is more powerful than a, than a hip adjustment that I would do chiropractically on you. Mm -hmm. Because this one here is letting your fascia, everything that's pulling it out, just get, it, get itself out of the way. Okay, let's go up and walk with that one. <clears throat> Again, there's nothing I've done here that requires any special skill. You can teach this to somebody in 20 minutes. You can show somebody a video, have them do it for you. It'll still work. It may work at like 60 or 80% of what I'm doing, but 60% of this is better than my best practitioners were in the clinic. I will say it does seem like a little bit of active user participation, just like I have to breathe and be intentional. Like you can't just do it right. to me. I have to like, I'm responding to you. Right, so, so the idea is, that's why we teach people to do the movement first. Because if, if you do the movement, you know how important the breath is and everything else. If you don't, people will tend to hold their breath and they won't breathe. And what we found is that, because what we're doing here, come over here for a second. Let's go into totally twisted for a second. Okay. So what we're doing is we're wrapping, we'll go this way for a second. We're wrapping the fascia around the spine. The spine's going all the way down here. We're wrapping it. And then when you breathe, what it's doing is it's forcing. Okay. So it's forcing the body to figure out how to resolve this tension in rotation around your spine. There it goes. And then I can also go up here and give it a bit more torque. Oh, you feel that calm down into your shoulders? So you got most of the tension here. So. Feel your whole body calming down. Can I go the other direction? Yeah, it's like, it, people can feel this, but it feels like it's a, the layer, the, the release, but it's like all through. It's, it's like you're wringing out a sponge. And it's inside the layers, like stuff's moving and twisting inside. You can feel it, right? Let's go, uh, let's go this, way. this way. So, okay. Go ahead. Just by me holding you, it, it gives your body less room to, to uh, move around. So it has to figure itself out in a more dynamic way. 
Are you sure you know this piece? And see, you notice the difference when you make sure your nose, you're going to get it more in the upper register above the, above the diaphragm of the chest. So you're going to hold your head here, breathe. There it goes. Okay, good. <clears throat> to, the, to the best of my knowledge, what I, when you say there it goes, the sensation I'm experiencing internally is that just the, the, the surrender, the relax, the, like, the melting into. Because it's like, it's not so much that, this is what I didn't get at first, but you know, like, there you go. I was like, wait, I didn't hear it. I think we're trained to think of like a like, pop, like chiropractor. It's like, no, it's like a psychological, uh, physiological, yeah, so there you go from a chiropractic is snap. Yeah. Okay, holding it, letting the body figure it out is a release of pressure. There you go. So that's what it is. It's a visceral. That's what I feel. Okay. Go for a walk. That makes sense. What do you notice different now? Head start to move more. So you're occupying a lot less space this way to move. Mm -hmm. Because before, you're, I'll give you exaggeration. You know, you're walking, you're going like this, right? Now you're going like this. So you're requiring less rotation to create the forward motion. Because the body uses rotation to create it. And if I can't, if one side's stuck, I'll go. So the more, so we look at people, you see, we look at people when they're running, you look at them, they're running like this. That's not necessarily good. They want to move the shoulders. But what if, if now your running is going to be even less shoulder movement to create the same action? It means that you have more energy over longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. So it's just a more efficient movement. So let's try a couple walks again. So in sports and mechanics, it's the efficiency of the movement. But the efficiency of the movement requires a couple things. Number one, it's the reduction of, of fascial tension. That's, that's reducing the muscle's ability to move. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. And it requires range of motion. But reduction of tension gives you more range of motion. And when you've got more range of motion, you, then, you, have, then you, have, you, act, you act more to your, what we call your synaptic optimized movement patterns. Those are the ones you grew up walking with, you knew. So you're getting closer to the core of what, how your body knows to walk. Mm -hmm. So the internal perception of, for you is what that looks like is I'm not thinking as much about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm using less energy to move. How's that feel? It's fluid. Yeah. yeah. OK, awesome. So just so you have a, some feeling of this, let's do a couple things on me. Because okay? um, there's a couple of the big ones, like the hip release. Now I'm a little jello-y. Yeah. But I want you to have a good sense of what this feels like, because if you do it on me, now you automatically, you've done it, you felt it, now you're gonna apply it. Now, all of a sudden, you have the ability to understand it. So, so first ones, is, yeah, just torque the knees first. Okay, and push them up. Okay, and then I'll just torque like this. Okay. Yeah. So be, do the knees first, and then just like, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And you can hold that for as long as you want, because I feel great cross tension coming through here. Mm -hmm. So you're doing something to me that I don't normally do myself, and nobody works on me, ever, almost. Like, it's like when something's finally wrong, I'm like, OK, Manvinder, Jason, Cynthia, somebody. Okay, now come on up. So you can, that's one way to do it. The other way is put your knees down. Mm -hmm. Now you come with, make a ball with me. Okay. So you're, yeah, there you go. There we go. Round the neck, round the neck. And there you go. Yeah. Here. It's a great way to get to know you, buddy. <laughs> Honest, it's not what it looks like. It's exactly what it looks like. Or the other one is, uh, come on, you've caught us doing worse things. Okay, so keep going, keep going. 
Uh, what I want you to do is grab my neck more. Mm -hmm. And grab my neck more. Both hands are on my neck. Okay, there you go. See, that one's way more deep for me. There. Get that good, good on the neck. More on the neck, don't worry about my shoulder. Yeah, you're not hurting. Okay, here you go. Is this forcing my spine to make a decision? In my body, feel that drop? Mm -hmm. That's the Derek roll. Roll me around a little bit. Yeah, so one area, hold it. Yeah, here. Hold it. There it is. And you can feel when it's done. Oh, this is a big one. This is my red cage shifting. Oh, it feels good. So, you knew when you were done there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try the other side. So, what did you experience when I was done? Uh, <laughs> it was a different map. Uh, it was a melting, relaxing, a release, you know? It's like... So you can stand up and do this and push down. Then you have more leverage. Yeah. So you can, like, right here. Yeah, and then push, and then roll, push it forward. Okay, there you go. Now you, could, you can stay right there. See how your knees are pushing into me? Mm -hmm. Super powerful. And I could even go like this if I wanted to. Okay, that's start one. That's one position you can hold. Mm -hmm. That one doesn't look so weird when you're with a group of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, now position number two is get on your knees and let's do it. Okay, I forgot. I like the way you did that. I never thought of that. Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, so I'll apply active pressure since you know what Jiu-Jitsu is. And mm -hmm. So here's the active pressure. Okay. So I'm tightening my spine. What if you told Joe Rogan you could use jiu-jitsu to fix every, every functional pain in the body? <laughs> ah, here we go. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now you've done it. You feel that you get a full 360. So I'll walk this out, and then we're going to do some cool shit. Um, I'm going to have you put me in a couple holds. So, so I'll walk. Oh man, is that really moved my hip? That was when you were when you were teaching me in the clinic yesterday. When you were teaching us in the running clinic yesterday. The one the one I had trouble with is the is I believe it's the last part of mine. It's like when you're like this, right? The one I had trouble with um, was was this because my hip had been pulled in and inverted. So, so it's pushed in. So this one, what you just happened there, whatever you did, mm -hmm. loosened up my hip. Yeah, it's that, it's that strange. What he's talking about is the cue. Up, ribs down, lengthen your head, glute engaged. So space through here, up, tall, that position, driving through the ground. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then on my right side, it was, I couldn't do it well because because it wanted to collapse, but what I had to do on my right side, oh, which I can do perfectly, because you said flex the yeah. back. I didn't even realize it wasn't. That's the thing. Okay, cool. What's some of your favorite jujitsu holds? Uh, well, I'm just getting started, so no way they've been done on me, but uh, yeah. I think there's a, there's a few, I uh, just being behind, like the hooks, the crushes. What about choke hold? Um, there's a few. Well, there's, there's actually, it's funny, you think about them, every one of them. Yeah, we could pick anyone. Well, pick one and put me in it. I'll show you. I'll show you the active. Right, you. Right, so kneel down. Okay. And then. So I gotta go around. Yeah. Yeah. I'm holding. So I'm here. Well, I. You're. You wouldn't grab behind me. You okay. would be in front. Yeah. So then I would try and grab. But like a triangle, for example, I would grab and pull down and yeah. then use this yeah. to pull. Yeah. 
and then I would grab and then work on your neck. Okay, so, so do that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna actively get, get me in your worst spot. Like, give me like you're gonna break something. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, right there. Okay, good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create activity against you, okay? Yeah. Ready? Now do it as hard as you want. Now, go ahead. As hard as you think you can. Honestly, you're not gonna hurt me. Well, without my uh, other gi, it's uh, hard to grab. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning into you, mm -hmm. and as a result, I lose the pain sensation and my body starts adapting. Yeah. But if in jujitsu I'm resisting you, I'm going to have pain sensation. You can't break a bone if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm pushing against you. Mm -hmm. You only break a bone when I stop pushing against you. Yeah. Okay, what about chokehold? Okay, so you would be, uh, let's just say, you lay, see I would get here, Take you over, take your back, pull. Okay, good. Just then, and I get hooks in. Yeah, so give me, just give me set up where you wanna be. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a second. I'll just drop the fear out of it. Okay. Okay, go ahead, choke. Go ahead. Come on, do more. Come on. <laughs> come on. I got more. Oh no, come on. That feels so good. You see, I stopped yeah. resisting you, and it, it, I mean, in a fight, it's gonna be a little bit different. And to be fair, if I were better at jujitsu, I would be different too. But... Well, let me, let me feel it to you, so go over here. Oh, I know what it feels like. I'll just do, I'll just do a different one. Okay. There you go. Okay. Let me in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what I want you to do now, okay, is tighten up your spine. Okay, all the way up. Now, uh, drop the fear. Let go. You're not in trouble. You're safe. Now I want you to just push against me. Push. Just kind of torque against me. What's happening to your pain? I'm 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 doing this pretty hard. We're moving together. Yeah. So it's not as painful. Mm -hmm. So here's another one. Um, yeah, so basically by going with you, yeah. See, really so, good at that once they get the gi and they can pull in there. Okay, so, so come and sit down with your legs facing me. I'll show you a really powerful partner move. Okay, so, so this is a powerful partner move for the lower back Ooh. for fascial maneuvers. You can bend your legs if you want. Yeah, bend your knees a little bit. Yeah, she'll be a better result. Okay. Feels good, eh? Mm -hmm. Best stretch ever. Because now what I'm doing is I'm pulling the fascia up the back, the skin up the back and stretching. <clears throat> now for the scapulas. <clears throat> Breathe. Pull back, torque against me. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> It'll be much more fun to do this. <laughs> I love this, this is fun. Okay, let's go for a walk. Let's see what that did. <laughs> Couples therapy. Yeah, this is my girlfriend. I appreciate this a lot more. <laughs> but my new girlfriend. Maybe <laughs> yeah, I'm your girlfriend. It'd be perfect. You said you were getting therapy done? <laughs> this new type of therapy. So, what do you notice now? Holy shit. Yeah, it just feels free. Yeah. It's like you're running while you're walking. Like the way your body's moving. But like. I'm not thinking about it at all. Yeah. Yeah, you're actually moving like a runner, which I noticed when I was working with Tyson Gay. He, he walks like he sprints. <laughs> and so that's one of the things I noticed about the well, best. Now, what's interesting is just even thinking that, like, there's a lift. 
Instead of just kind of like this rotation for the sake of rotation, every step has a lift. Yeah. It's but my, my torso. The feet are really loud now too. Okay. So let's do let's do one that seems like let's let's uh let's test you let's test your left shoulder where there's a little bit of yeah. pain, a little bit of worry around there. So let's uh, lay on your stomach. Right. Your other stomach. <laughs> okay, Cross, uh, cause put your arms behind your head, uh, like here, yeah, like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between here, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn your head this way. Breathe. 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 Oh, there's a big release here. I better do the other side too. So one of the ways to do it is to pull the body up, pull the fascia up. Yeah. Turn your head the other way. There you go. Now I'm going to put a torque on the elbow. So it kind of looks like jujitsu, fascial jujitsu. Okay, good. Let's do your legs. So bring your knee up, uh, bend your knee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it up like this. And see, I get leverage here and I can move your knee around and create leverage and stretch. Just tighten your spine. Push your knee to the ground. You see how that active engagement changes the way that you feel, it doesn't feel so hard anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So if you actively engage, we both win. If you don't actively engage, one of us wins, one of us loses. Okay, this is where. Trying to find that spot here. There it is. Okay, awesome. Okay. Super powerful because, it, like, your girlfriend could sit there and do that to you. She wouldn't have the leverage to move your body. But that way, it's easy. She's sitting on you and you're going like this. Yeah. So let's go for a walk. Fascial Sutra. <laughs> so no therapy, no special sessions, just two guys hanging out, doing a little bit of exercise, and it's becoming therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, do one more lap. So tell me what you're, tell me what you're feeling. extension in the back has been, there's no more hindrance there. So it's just kind of, it, it's settled back. My pelvis is settled underneath me. Yeah. Now, like, I don't know what to do because I'm so used to like. So keep walking. So yeah, you don't know what to do. So give it a couple more minutes and then tell me when you feel like it's settled itself, like it's figured itself out. Because like you said, I don't know what to do, but do you have to do anything? That's what I'm trying to release the, uh, Trying to release the, the impression that I have to do something is I heard this. It's basically the understanding that as you work through these pieces, the body knows how to pattern correctly. Right. We don't have to tell that we don't have to build a new pattern. The body we remove all the patterns, the body knows what to do in every situation. The body has to think about it because I built a pattern of going like this all the time, right? So now I want to use it for something other than that, it has to think about it. 
because it's so used to just, that's the action, it's programmed. Remove all the patterns. So fascial maneuvers is, first of all, removing all the patterns. But then afterwards, I'll show you how we advance a fascial maneuver, okay? okay. So let's do swinger. Um, uh, athletic stance, uh, your, t uh, your fingertips touching your kneecaps. Chest up, butt back, squeeze your spine in, left hand on right shoulder. Okay, pull the skin right here, pull it up and lock it. Okay, pull your body to the, yeah, and head offset. Okay, this is, this is, a, this is a called swinger. Don't drop down. That should feel pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Breathe. Take your left foot step behind to advance it. Drop that heel down, can you? There you go. There you go. Okay. Come on up. We're doing both sides, and then I'm going to turn it from a. This is that like the wave? Of, I like going as like a wave of that perspiration kind of. So that perspiration is the coming out of the toxins that are created in that. The fascia wraps us this way, this way, and this way. So that's a layer and layer of toxins coming out that you don't normally get to. That's what it is. So athletic stance. Left hand on right shoulder. Right hand over here. Pull the body around. Yeah. Left hand, right shoulder. Yeah. And then always grab the skin and lock it. You're the opposite side, right? Yeah. And the more you lock it, like you can even torque it if you want, but, but lock it. And then squat. Pull that spine in. Squeeze the anus. Okay, right foot behind. Drop, yeah, there you go. Drop the heel. Squeeze the spine. Okay, good. Okay, that's, okay, let's integrate that and I'm gonna show you how to turn that, oh, man, I almost made that. Okay, so let's uh, go for a quick walk and then come back and we're gonna turn it into uh, a mover. Oh, sorry, a power movement. So that was a release movement, but the difference between release and power is not what we do external in, in fascial maneuvers, it's how we handle the internal environment. That's a good one, by the way. Eh? Yeah, that, that's one I'll do every morning. Yeah, you do that one every morning, okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so, Let's take the same one, athletic stance. Okay, left arm up, and grab the right arm. Okay, you're gonna pull around into a fast forward, head up. Okay, now drop in. Tighten your spine really hard, really, really, really hard. Now, I want you to, what I want you to do is actually squeeze every muscle, your toes, everything. Squeeze every muscle in your body as hard as you can. Now, breathe hard. <sighs> Okay, now I'll go for a walk. That feels like a workout. Yeah, this whole thing feels like a workout. Well, see, this is my point. What if I could work out uh, and not create any damage or load on my body so that when I ran, I had more energy to run? Then I would ask you what the uh, what running is, if not a workout. Well, running is for enjoyment and pleasure of life. We're training if I'm trying to work for a sport. Yeah, but why don't you do the workout first and then you, why don't you have fun when you're running? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. Oh, you hit it! This is, Whoa. Yeah, I don't know if we had a video of this before, but like, I, a few minutes ago, I could not, I was about an inch short of this. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make that stuff up. Let's do it the other way. That, like, <laughs> I know you, I know what it looks like, but like, it's not. Like, that's. Okay, so athletic stance, do the other one. We did, uh, I think this one should do uh, right, yeah. Okay, uh, pull it around, turn the head. Okay, drop down. Bit of, pitch a bit more forward, go like this, yeah. Okay, now go ahead, breathe. Heart, tighten everything, tight feet, toes, everything. Squeeze your eyes. Deep, lots of breath, lots of breath. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There you go, okay, good. Now, that equivalent uh, from a metabolic function, just that one movement, would be equivalent to like 20 to 30 minutes running on a treadmill. From, a, from the way that we perceive that 
Um, and, you know, everybody always says, well, show it, prove it. And I'm like, man, if you're asking me to prove it, it's because you're too, too lazy to try it. <laughs> do you have a tape measure in here? <laughs> we do. I would love to measure myself. Let's yeah, measure. You're like taller than that thing now. Can you grab tape? Yeah. Definitely. So I was, um, as in the, you know what? You're what? As a, um, as an aside, I was, uh, when I was young, I was six one and three quarters. Like, as in young, like 20s, like high school, 20s, the highest I ever got was six one and three quarters. And I remember because I always wanted to be six two, and I was really annoyed that I missed that quarter of an inch. But then somehow in my mid to late 20s, or my early to mid 20s, I got measured at a doctor and I was six one. I was like, when did I lose three quarters of an inch? This is silly. And I don't know if it was injuries or obviously we know why, because like the old people get shriveled and shrunk down, but I was like, I'm too young for this. And my back was hurting, I had in injuries and stuff. And so then um, recently I measured I was six one and a half. So like doing this work, I kind of unbound it, but. Okay, let's do two more things and then we'll measure you. Yeah. So we should go grab tape measure. Guys, <laughs> for your fingers in the jaw, get right off the back, okay? It's gonna hurt like shit, okay? Uh, okay? Behind the teeth? No, no, right up to the back. Oh, like into the back oh, yeah. of the... It's as far as you can go, yeah. Okay. Okay, now what I want to do is, it's gonna hurt. Okay, open up. Spot. And go side to side. Yeah, good. Good, and then come on up here for a second. I'm just gonna do this for you. Okay. Okay. Okay, go for a walk, but this time I want you to feel your toes and your feet. You can hear your feet more. Muscle on the side of the jaw. But notice your toes. Mm. Okay, one more lap, but notice, notice how your toes and your feet are moving now. I feel like you're pushing off your toes, right? Yeah. So the jaw affects the sacrum and affects your ankle movement and your toes, giving you back part of that 22%, which I want. Okay. So, let's go. There go. So, like so my... On, on the, uh, like it's, the cool thing is that like you can't, you can't fake the height, you know? It's like, it's a barefoot. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> wow. Super powerful. Yeah. So, what's the biggest thing that you learned today? The, um, everything in the body is, in, like it's it's uh, the the shape of the body is instructed by the fascia, mm -hmm. like and the fascia is the system. So like nothing we did was let's say uh, uh, maybe maybe not musculoskeletal in a sense. Maybe the power moves, but like by moving and unbinding the body, it just expanded. Yes, like everything feels like I've taken one movement or one range or one angle, and it's just like just open it so it feels more expansive. Mm -hmm. So so how does this change the way that you think about muscles and fascia and? Performance. Well, I mean, it's more confusing now than ever, but it's, I think that no matter, like, the performance is limited by your fashion. Right. So what I'm getting, and this is something like where, you know, I kind of came with a running start, having like, talked to you before, somewhat familiar with the stuff. Obviously, this has been a more intensive session, but my performance, like I've trained for years, over a decade, a lot of running, a lot of uh, sprinting work, a lot of training very musculoskeletal dominant and you get stronger, you get better like producing force in like the gym, but it hasn't translated to the field or the track until this last two months or so, this last month or so where the thing, everything feels easier. I'm putting up like my sprints are getting faster, my jumps are getting higher, my 400 meter repeats, my conditioning, everything feels more effortless. But the only thing I'm doing, I'm maintaining the training I'm doing, but I'm actually backing off like the volume I'm doing is like half of what I was doing a year ago. But what I'm adding in is just an understanding for 
the breath, the expansion of everything through these fascial, like the meridian lines and just understanding the fascia and doing anti-gravity daily. Like it, it's just, I feel like I'm doing less and getting more. Right. So that's, this is what it is, is that the body has, is, the job of the brain is to optimize the mo mo movement of the body. Mm -hmm. And so the brain has to work on restrictions. So if I re remove restrictions, the brain automatically knows how to move. That's why I don't have to, like, if I'm going to go to go down a set of stairs and my knee's bad, I don't think about it. I put my hand out. Mm -hmm. But the second my knee's okay, my hand doesn't go out. It doesn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I didn't even do, no, I did that. The, the body's more intelligent than our brain. And the brain is just trying to run the programs. And so as you remove the restrictions, your brain thinks less, you use less energy to do the same thing. So you can either perform longer or you have less recovery time. So, because all you've done since I met you, which is like two months, mm -hmm. is just add a couple fascial maneuvers, not even a whole bunch. Yeah, seriously. And like most of those, the anti gravity, the, like some of these basic like standing in postures, but also everything like mm -hmm. just the basic idea around fashion, understanding that like every movement, I kind of stopped doing like basic like hip hinge and deadlift. It's like there's some rotation. So, when I'm doing, even just holding a weight in like <clears throat> Doing a corkscrew squat and starting to think about just, just basically. So, so just good. Do that again one sec. So, watch this. Okay, now turn your head this way when you do it. Oh, yeah. See the difference? Okay, do it again. Okay, a corkscrew squat. Okay, that's what everybody does. Okay, yeah. now get down there and turn your head. See how it kicked in right there? Yeah. So, what happens is it's a counter rotated. Adding counter rotation to every movement means the entire body's engaged, not just the. Because when you did this, you're moving two zones of the body. But if I do this, now I do turn my head, now everything is engaged. So then it, the spine has leverage and power too. That's why I but squeeze my teeth when I want to leverage. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, I'm not getting the, the top part in there. But when I go like this and turn, all of a sudden I'm getting the top part in. Yeah. So a little thing, and I've noticed a lot more of my accessory movements have dropped the weight and just started to think about like, you know, uh, playing some position holds with rotation. But it's just like every time I, we talk, there's another layer of, okay, you know, thinking about, where, where are my eyes going? Where am I moving? How can I, this rotation from all the way through the spine to the sacrum up, as opposed to just like the feet, just the knee and the bow and just the hip. It's like where the, the upper spine, where the neck going, so. And just to be clear, that was exhausting. <laughs> if I seem scrambled, it may seem like nothing, but my brain is like, you need to go to bed. Right, it's, right. So, so, so the question is, is, do you feel like you have to move now? Well, I feel like that was, the movement. Yes. So, yes, but we yes, didn't yes. do a lot. So that means that means you got the same satiation in your nervous system without with less impact to your body. Mm -hmm. So then, when you want to impact your body with fun, be very intelligent. You, you, and you're, you you have more capacity to have fun. Well, that's what I've noticed too. Is just the thought about this because it's like how do you balance the training load for a specific sport or output while having fun while also doing the things you enjoy? And it's like, well, what if I didn't need to go for like let's say the the mobility? I didn't have to. I could do half of the work. I mean, I could do the same volume of work, but half of it or three quarters of it was less impactful on the body. Because I do notice now it's like, for example, this expanded spine, it's like you start to notice like I'm feeling good. And even from there to like the second, it's like, okay, it's kind of like a pump in the muscle. It's like, okay, I feel like I'm decompressed and I'm feeling good. And it's like, okay, then you kind of settle down. And I, so I imagine it's like a stepwise function as you start to get more and more like out of the bat. But you, you, you step away from this, like, I have to have these patterns all the time, you allow your body to reorganize and need things expand. That becomes more and more than that and the norm. And so then I'm like more, and I'm, I'm, actually, I'm lifting less and less heavy weights and more partial weights and they're only when I can maintain this form, just playing with stuff and I'm backing off these things. And I notice it's like, I, I don't want to not feel good. And that's the thing is like, I know if I do a, like three sets of 10 back squat or something like just a lot of volume, a lot of load on the body. It's like, I don't feel good after it. But if I can back off the volume, hit the exact stimulus I need with the, the weight and then cut down the volume by quarter, it's like, what does that look like? And I have a feeling that's where the performance improves and everything else. Cause that's what I really want is to, be able to run fast and be able to jump high and play sports and be athletic. Not necessarily be able to pick up 500 pounds. I would like to think it's not mutually exclusive, but you know, it's like, I got to, playing with that, but this seems like a huge step forward for me. It just feels more fluid and athletic. So I, I learned this lesson, um, took me when I was a bodybuilder, I showed you pictures the other day, 18, 19. Jack. So I, it took me a long time to get to 300 pounds, to break 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was at the, you know, putting on the dimes and the nickels, and mm -hmm. I'm at 395, and, or sorry, at 295, and I'm trying to get it. 
And, and I just couldn't crack over it, right? And then one day, I go to the gym, and, and I'm like, good. And I, I rocked it up, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go for it. Let's go 305. And the dude that spotted me goes, you just did 305. And, and so, so a lot of it has to do with, you know, even my perception of what it is I'm trying to do. It's, it's really about, like, like you said, I used to lift because I wanted to lift heavy or I wanted to have a specific look. But bodybuilding was a look. And then I, and then I lifted heavy as a, as a way, but I didn't want to do it too much because I'd ruin the look. Yeah. What's, now I've come full circle where I just want to move, have fun, be a kid again. I want to climb. I don't care how I, how I look. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been going through shape dysmorphia all over the place. But really what I want to do is I just want to have a good time. And that's where I'm at. I'm finally at the stage. It took me two and a half years to get here. But since we created this program, someone could do what I did in two and a half years. They can do in about six to nine months. Mm. Because I didn't have these, these were, we didn't, I, this wasn't a program I started. It was like, I figured out each piece and Jason and Cynthia, we went out every day climbing. We came back, we looked at our bodies and we said, we gotta, I wanna change some stuff. So mm. this is really what it is. It's having fun again, just being a kid. So what I suggest now is uh, we, got a, we got an Arctic level ocean. Cold plunge. All right. Let's do it, man. It's been fun. Hey, great in. Go on. If you want to grab a if you don't want to, you want to grab a little bit. You got to get in a little bit. Walk in with a new one. Uh, First thing Graham says to me, he said, touch me. He goes, how come you're not cold? I can't feel my anything, but he, he doesn't, he's floating. He's so, not moving his arms. So, I, so what happened is, as I dropped the muscle density, the fascial layers opened up and they have insulation between the layers. So what Cynthia, Jason, and, uh, and I, we realized is that we actually were swimming, it's like it's not cold. It is cold though, right? My testicles feel like they are, like they are, Searing off my body. <laughs> Do you go again? Yeah. Ice cold. I ice cubes. <laughs> Good Do this every day. I have it here. Okay, so, here, so here, here's the thing. You know how hot we got when we died? Yeah. Why can't you generate that heat right now? Well, it's starting to. It's just, I think it's a shock reaction. So, like, oh, yes. Yeah. We're going to wire stance. Do it. Right on. There's a body of one right there. I get it. You now breathe in. Doubles because of the stress. So the body's stressed, so we take the body out of stress, the pain sensation drops by half. Yeah. And then it just starts to flow, and now it starts to warm. Yeah. So, so again, it's, it's just about how our body regulates. It. Yeah. Isn't that great? Nice. That was great. Yeah. 